Hi everyone, I'm going to go over Zim Integrated Shipping Services, ticker symbol ZIM. A viewer named Susan is interested in this stock and so are many people. I'll show you the RSI and the MACD in just a moment, but first to the numbers. It ended the day at $60.20. It is up nearly 6%. The 52-week low, $28.50. The 52-week high, $91.23. Volume higher than normal with 7.4 million shares traded, and the average volume is 6 million shares traded. It has a market cap of $7.2 billion, and according to TradingView.com, it pays a dividend yield of 68.63%. But on stockanalysis.com, it says the company pays out a dividend yield of 35.71% and is paid out 3x dividends starting on August 24th of 21 at $2, then 250, then 17. And here's the dividend chart and then some articles that you can click on as well. I normally do not go through all of this because I just do quick TA with the charts, but that's just something for you to check out. And going back to the sidebar here, under the performance, it is up nearly 10%. For the month, it is down nearly 29%. But for the year, it is up 109%. If you want to do a deep dive into the financials, you can click on this tab. Check out the overview, the income statement, the balance sheet, the cash flow, and the stats on the company as well. And again, I normally don't do this, but I just want to show you if you've never seen this before on TradingView. And under the technicals, it's considered a sell as of this moment. Under the analyst rating, it's considered a buy. And you can click on this tab for more technicals. You can check out the summary, the oscillators, the moving averages, and the pivot points as well. And again, I typically don't show this, but just for your information. Now on tipranks.com, the low forecast is $41.80. The average is $79 and the high is $120. On Wall Street Zen, the low, the average, and the high is $120. I think only one analyst gave a prediction. And on stockanalysis.com, the low is $63.63. The average is $91.65. The high is $126. And hypothetically speaking, let's just say you bought the stock at $61. If it goes to the next level of $63.63, that is a return of 4.31% to the next level. That is a return of roughly 29%. And if it gets to $91.65, which is basically at two standard deviations, that is a return of 50%. And if we make it to $126, that is a return of 106%. Of course, we may never get there or it could take a very long time to do so. So you'll have to decide, is this stock worth the time and the money. Now, I want to also show you that whenever a stock hits support, which is on this line, this is negative two standard deviations, this is negative three and negative four. Normally, we don't really get here very often. You'll see that typically when you use this chart, everything stays within this channel. It's nice and smooth. And when it hits support, it tends to bounce up and then it went back down again, bounced up. This is the middle or the median. If price is down here, this is resistance. It could not go past this. So it fell back down and then it made its way back up, goes sideways and then goes down again. So that again is support. And this is support right here. It actually touched negative two standard deviations. And then it went up, fell back down, basically touched the middle, and then went back up to here. But this right here, again, is support. And what does this stock do when it tends to hit support? It tends to bounce. And this is where we are. We are. Is this a rinse and repeat? Hopefully. But notice when the stock hits, 
resistance, which is this level right here, this line, this is two standard deviations, this is three standard deviations, and this is four standard deviations, it hit resistance. And what does a stock do when it hits resistance? People tend to cash out and they run. So it started to go down, it went sideways, went back up, tried to hit this resistance level, but didn't quite make it, fell down and started to make its way back up. This is resistance. What does it do when it touches this line? It starts to fall back down and then makes its way back up, hits this middle part. This is where the price likes to hang out for a while, takes a breather, buyers and sellers duking it out. It goes down, goes back up, goes sideways, goes up. No stock goes straight up like an escalator. That does not happen. A stock will barcode, consolidate, take a breather before it possibly takes another leg up or it goes back down. So what happens when the stock hits resistance up here? This is basically, again, this is two, this is three. This is basically three and a half standard deviations. It fell to here, bounced back up, hit this resistance and then cratered and then hit this line. But when price is up here and it goes to this line, this becomes support, it hits support, and then it bounced up. So that's how you kind of read this chart. And then you can decide and anticipate people's moves. Obviously, if you are investing, you don't care that this is hitting resistance because you are in it for the long term. But if you are day trading or swing trading, these are areas that are possible target areas that you might want to start taking your profits or start selling some of your shares. It all depends on what your strategy is. Now, taking a look at this RSI on the weekly time frame, double click it to make it larger. We're almost at 50. We are turning up. Let me move this out of the way. The MACD has not crossed over to the upside just yet. Still about to go down, still selling off. So you need both of these to go up to show us that there is a true sign of a reversal. And I don't think we're quite there just yet, but we're close. And you'll see that on the daily time frame. All right, now my chart looks like a hot mess. So we are sitting right here to the upside is $69.83 to the downside is $53.31. And obviously there are many levels in between. I typically will buy a stock that I'm interested in, a quality stock down here or here or here. And then I just let it ride up. I set it and I forget it. But again, it depends on what you're trying to do that you'll need to micromanage your stock to get out when it hits certain levels. Taking a look at this uh, on the daily time frame, the RSI is turning up. That looks really good. It's at 41. The MACD has not crossed over, but it looks like if everything continues on its path with no bad news, then it's about to cross over. So that's good. Again, you need both of these to turn up so that the stock can rip. We are starting to see volume in here as well. And notice when the stock is here, it touched resistance, it starts to go up. It hit, excuse me, that is support. It starts to go up. This is resistance. I anticipate the stock to start cratering and it did. And notice there's a gap to the downside right here. It went down, but it needs to be filled on the way up. So nine out of 10 gaps do fill. So I suspect that will get filled, but according to tip ranks and the other analysts, it will definitely get filled if the stock goes back up. That will fill this area. And I'm tracking something. I made some trend lines for myself and I'm thinking that the stock will sort of follow this path, but that's something that I do for myself and I'll be tracking that. And let me show you what the stock looks like, not excuse me, the stock, how the market ended and everything looking good today for the most part. Microsoft, Apple, Visa, PayPal, Nvidia, AMD, Google, Disney, Netflix. I'm tracking Netflix very closely and so is RB. 
and Facebook, Amazon, Tesla, HD, back in the green. So that's nice to see, but it was uh, touch and go there for a while, days of losses, but hopefully things will level off. I don't think we're out of the woods yet, but anyway, that's what I wanted to show you. If there is a stock that you want me to check out, please comment below and thank you so much for watching.